Hi, this is Hilal. In this video on Mathematical Economic Series, we will try to solve a problem on quasi-linear utility functions. The question is like this. The utility function of a consumer from consumption of good x1 and x2 is given by that is u x1 x2 is equal to x1 plus 2 under root of x2. That is we are being given the utility function of a consumer. Okay. At current price and income, the consumer's optimal consumption bundle is given by x1 uh, is 10 and x2 is 10. That means at uh, optimal consumption, he consumes uh, 10 units of x1 and 10 units of x2. The consumer's optimal choice of x2 if his income increases by 50% but price remains unchanged is we have to see what is the impact of increase in the budget of the consumer uh, on the consumption of good x2 okay so we will see how to solve this first of all we are being given the utility function i will write here utility function is given as u x1 x2 is equal to x1 plus 2 under root x2 and if we can observe this this is a quasi linear utility function or we say the quasi linear uh, preferences for the consumer and it uh, it says that quasi linear uh, preferences are those where uh, to achieve maximum satisfaction consumer buys only up to certain amount of one of the two goods here we have x1 and x2 that makes of his basket okay up to a certain uh, critical point the consumer will consume only one good and after that critical point is reached he will not consume any of that very good and all his consumption bundle will go for the x1 okay and generally uh, this utility function quasi linear utility function is uh, written uh, something like this u x1 x2 is equal to x1 plus v of x2 that means our consumption uh, utility function is linear in good x1 and non-linear in good x2 okay so uh, quasi linear utility function in this case is composite of uh, the linear uh, uh, linear function for the good x1 and non-linear for the uh, consumption of good x2. Here we can see we have under root and it is non-linear non uh, variable here. Okay, so generally we write the utility function for quasi-linear preferences like this uh, x1 plus uh, v uh, that is x2 is a function uh, that this uh, x2 is actually the non-linear function okay it is composed of linear plus non-linear okay now coming to the question it was just uh, uh, to show you how we form the quasi-linear utility function now the question tells us we are being given the utility function and what is our budget constraint here so budget constraint we can form the budget constraint simply so that means uh, p1 that means price of good x1 x1 and the commodity of uh, the units of x1 plus uh, p2 x2 is equal to m that means we need to maximize this quasi linear utility function subject to this budget constraint as we do in the optimality conditions so what is the now uh, optimality condition or first order condition for maximization or optimization as we know uh, for that we use the tangency condition that is marginal uh, utility of good x1 upon marginal utility of good x2 should be equal to the ratio of the price of good x1 upon the price of good x2 or we write it simply that marginal rate of substitution between two gurus should be equal to the marginal rate of transformation that means marginal rate of substitution for two gurus should be equal to the ratio of their prices okay so we need to find the marginal utility of x1 and marginal utility of x uh, x2 okay so uh, it is actually here 
2 that is marginal utility for good x2 now what is marginal uh, utility for good x1 so this is simply the derivative of our quasi linear utility function with respect to variable x1 okay the derivative of x1 is simply 1 so it is 1 and since in the second term no x1 is involved so it is assumed to be constant and the derivative of a constant as i have told you n number of times it zero okay now what is the marginal utility of good x2 so i will write here that means we again need to differentiate our quasi linear utility function this time with respect to x2 okay so the derivative of x1 it is constant here no x2 is involved in the first term so it is zero what is the derivative of x2 let us see how do we find so we have x2 first i will show you so i will write 2 here also so we have x2 what is derivative of this so we can write it like this uh, x2 1 by 2 so we can write it like this now by power function rule this 1 by 2 will become coefficient so we have this will become 1 upon 2 we have x2 1 by 2 minus 1 by power function rule uh, the exponent becomes coefficient and exponent is subtracted by 1 it is very simple okay so this 2 and 2 will get cancelled we are left with x2 now 1 by 2 minus 1 is minus 1 by 2 and it can be written as uh, uh, it can be written like this uh, 1 upon x to the power 1 by 2 when we uh, transpose numerator to denominator the exponent sign gets changed okay so it is minus 1 upon 2 will become plus 1 upon 2 or we can write it like this x2 uh, so it is here x2 x2 okay so the derivative of uh, 2x2 is 1 upon x2 so i will write here 1 upon under root x2 okay let me rub this out i was just trying to show you how do we take the derivative of a square root okay now using the tangency condition that is marginal utility of a uh, tangency condition is that marginal utility of good x1 which is 1 so i will write here 1 upon marginal utility of x2 that is marginal utility of x2 we got it here 1 upon x2 okay should be equal to the price ratio p1 upon p2 okay we need to find the demand function for x2 that's why i am just deriving the demand function for x2 here okay because the question is about the change in the optimal choice of x2 okay so uh, it can be written like this uh, it uh, when we transpose this will get reciprocated so we are left with x2 is equal to p1 upon p2 okay or x2 is equal to when we transpose this root it will become here square so this is p1 upon p2 square okay or we can write it p1 square upon p2 square okay so we got the demand function for good x2 okay similarly we can find the demand function for good x1 but we don't need to find that very thing here because we are uh, interested in x2 so this is our marshallian demand function or this is our ordinary demand function for x2 here now what the question tells us the question tells us initially the optimal consumption uh, was given by the consumer was purchasing x uh, 10 units of x1 10 units of x2 okay now the consumer's optimal choice of x2 if his income increases by 50 percent okay if this is the demand function uh, we have to see the impact of change in income when sorry we have to uh, find the uh, impact of change in income uh, in the consumption of good x2 okay if this is our demand function for x2 then change in income with respect to change in x2 or 
change in the consumption of x2 with respect to change in income is given by simply we just need to take the partial derivative of this demand function with respect to income okay so what is our uh, demand function demand function is x2 is equal to p1 square upon p2 square to see the impact of change in income on the x2 we need to take the required derivative that means we need to take the derivative with respect to income that means uh, dx2 upon dm okay now change in consumption of x2 with respect to change in the income so change in income is by uh, income has changed by 50 percent we have to see here what will happen now if you can visualize here we have no variable of income here okay so what will be the derivative of this demand function with respect to m it will be zero it is then constant since no m is involved so it is here zero okay and what does how do we interpret uh, this result it's very simple it means when the consumer has reached to this uh, optimal bundle of uh, x1 uh, 10 units of x1 10 units of x2 any change in income will result zero units change in the consumption of x2 okay this is the uh, meaning of this we take the derivative this is our demand function to see the impact of change in income on the consumption optimal consumption of x2 we just need to take the derivative of the demand function for x2 with respect to m and if we take this derivative here no m is involved no uh, uh, money uh, income uh, variable is involved so the derivative will be simply zero so any change in income will result zero percent change in the consumption of x2 okay and we say in this case if i can uh, draw i will try let us say this is x2 and this is x1 okay what does this tell us it simply tells us since the uh, since the consumer is consuming let us say 10 units of x1 and 10 units of x2 let us say it is here okay here we have 10 units of x1 10 units of x2 okay what does this tell us it simply says us initially the consumer will buy only one good okay he will initially buy the consumption of only good x2 okay until he reaches uh, to a critical point okay or to the critical value which is uh, 10 okay uh, and after he reaches uh, to this critical point okay he will not buy any unit of their good further okay and any increase in income will lead to increase in the consumption of other good the other good here is x1 okay so we can say that initially the consumer will consumers optimal bundle will lie on this horizontal axis until he reaches uh, to the critical value here it is 10 and after we reach this critical value any increase in income any increase in income will lead zero increase in the consumption of x2 and the consumer will purchase only the x1 commodity okay so what will be the indifference curve in this case in this case the vertical uh, sorry uh, the indifference indifference curve are the vertical translates that is our indifference curve will look like this let us see we have this this okay so initially if he is consuming 10 units of x1 uh, sorry x2 we have x1 here when his income increases obviously he will reach to the new indifference curve but he will not purchase any unit of x2 and all uh, all increase in income after he reaches the critical value he will 
allot that very income in the consumption of x2 okay so this is how do we solve the quasi linear utility function okay i repeat initially the consumer will buy only one good here x2 until he reaches a critical point and after that he will not buy any uh, unit of that good this case x2 and any increase in the income will lead to the increase in the consumption of other good x1 okay so uh, we can say that this uh, x2 can be any uh, any commodity uh, which the consumer consumes very less or which are the necessities like we have the salt we can say consumer will not go for consumption of the salt continuously okay he will he will buy salt up to a critical point after that any increase in income will not lead to any increase in the amount of uh, consumption of the salt and uh, any increase the, in the income will lead to the increase in the consumption of other goods okay other normal goods i hope i make myself clear in this video so the question will be there will be no change in in the consumption of uh, good x2 when the consumer has reached to a critical point that is x1 is 10 and x2 is 10 because any further increase in the income will lead to zero increase in the consumption of x2 uh, and if the question would have told us to find what would have happened uh, to the optimal uh, consumption of x1 so then we we could have solved it for that very thing also but the question tells us only about the x2 so we solved for x2 i hope i make myself clear in this video thank you if you like this series please share subscribe uh, this is the only motivation that keeps me uh, making more useful stuff for you people if there are some mistakes in uh, making things understandable to you i really apologize for that because i am just a student of economics in that capacity whatever i can do for you people i am doing my best thank you